Want to see us build this hand plane? Stick around. Alright, this is the blank that we're going to use for the block plane. And basically we took a piece of curly maple and a piece of purple heart for the sole, which is much harder, and laminated that, that together. Then we lay that on marks. You move in your mark. Alright, this is basically what the plane's going to look like. Here we're gonna we're gonna pre-drill a half inch hole for the dowel that's gonna hold the blade, and then we're gonna drill four quarter inch holes first, and then we're gonna slice it apart, and we're gonna use dowels to bring the whole thing together when we glue it up to final size. So let's get started on this thing. All right, so let's uh, drill the half inch hole. do is we're going to use a cross cut sled with a block stop set up at three of an inch to cut our sides off this off this block. We could have used a bandsaw. I feel this is for me is a little better. It's a little more accurate. The bandsaw needs a little more setup on it. So let's get the cut. three sections. We have both the outer faces and the inner section. This we have to take down, make it a little bit thinner for the blade, for the blade size. Then we're going to cut this in half and make our adjustments. 45 degree cut on one side and it's 56 degree or 65 degree on the other. And then we'll glue the whole thing up. We've set the cross cut sled up with the miter gauge on it to cut the angles in the center of the block plane. The first thing we're going to cut is at 50 degrees which is where the blade is going to lay. It's a York pitch and it with block planes, you do a lot of end grain work, so you're going to want a higher pitch on the blade. And if you're working with figured woods, it actually makes it easier too. So let's do our first cut of it. All right, now we're at the router table. What we're going to do is we have to make a slot in the center block here for the cap screw that holds the cap to the plane iron. This one happens to be about 5 eighths of an inch, so we have a 5 eighths straight bit in here. We have it centered, do a center cut on here, and we're going to run it approximately to about here. We don't go all the way down with it, but enough so we have enough tra travel for the blade. So let's get going. There we go. We pre-assembled the block plane. You see we have our cap screw hole, dowel hole. This is where it pays off to drill these quarter inch alignment holes before we even started. We pre-assembled this thing, getting close, and get an idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a pencil, and we're gonna draw, get in close, a line where everything meets up here. What this is gonna do is gonna show us where not to put glue. And in this area, we're gonna put wax down so the glue doesn't stick to it to make it easier to clean up. So that's basically it. Now we're on to gluing this baby up. All right, we're gonna take a little wax now. We're gonna put, spread some wax in these inside surfaces where the pencil outlined. This is where we don't want the glue to go.
Now we're going to spread some glue on the spots that aren't waxed and we're going to glue this thing up. Now we're going to insert the dowel, we're going to put it in dry, and then once we get it almost all the way through, I'm going to apply some glue on this end, and on this end, and then we're going to push it in. Okay, now we're just going to let it dry. Once the plane dried, we took other clamps and we took a flush cut saw and we used that to cut the dowels that were holding the block together. What's nice about a flush cut saw is all the teeth are set in the same direction. So you can go right to the wood and chop them off and not damage the surface underneath. So now we're going to go to the band saw and we're going to cut the shape of the hand plane. And then from that point, we're going to take files and rasps and we're going to shape it to fit our hands the way we want it to fit. So here's our basic shape, cut out of the bandsaw, take a look. Now the fun part, we're going to take some rasps and we're going to shape this to fit the way it feels comfortable to us. Every plane is going to feel different to everyone else, so if you make one of these, you're going to shape it so it feels comfortable in your hands. So this should be fun, so let's get going.
After filing to the basic shape we wanted and a little elbow grease and some sanding, we finally got down to basically what we want. Feels good in the hands. There's no sharp edges anywhere. Two more things left to do before we put finish on this thing and call it done is one, we're gonna put a chamfer around the bottom to help protect it from chipping. It is wood after all. And then we're gonna flatten the sole on probably the flattest thing we have, which is the table saw. We're gonna put down a piece of sticky um, sandpaper and we're gonna flatten it on that. And after that, we're going to put some finish on it and call this thing done. Let's go. Now that all the sanding is done and the sole is flat, put our chamfers on the bottom and we're gonna put a finish on it. We could have left it um, basically naked, no finish on it, but we wanna give it some degree of protection, so we're gonna go with a simple wipe on, wipe off, uh, gel varnish. So I'll show you how we do that. Right. What we're gonna be using is uh, Bartley gel stain, which is a clear varnish. It's a wipe on, wipe off process, real easy. Uh, no fuss, no muss, you really can't mess this one up. So let's put some finish on this thing. See how it looks. Now remember when using these kind of varnishes, <clears throat> when you're done, make sure you take your rags, you lay them up flat, or put them in some sort of water, because if you leave them balled up, they could spontaneously combust. And the last thing you want is your shop to burn down. So always keep that in mind when you're working with this stuff. Look at the figure and the curly maple in this thing, it's beautiful. And a knot, but looks nice. All right, we're gonna let that sit, let that dry, apply probably one more coat, and while we're waiting for that to dry, I am going to put an edge on that blade. So next time I come back, you're gonna see this thing finished and cut some wood. Okay, let's, let's see how this thing cuts the wood. Not bad. Now the big difference between a wooden hand plane and your typical metal hand plane, to adjust the blade back and forth, you have a knob. These you don't. So to advance the blade, you're actually gonna have to tap it forward with a hammer to get a heavier cut, and to back off the blade, you have to tap the back of it. Now, tuning one of these planes is, to me, is a little tougher than tuning a regular hand plane. It's gonna take more time to get this thing cutting properly than it did to actually make it. So it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get the cut that you want. That's what we want. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the Creno style hand plane build. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you decide to make one, I hope you get some satisfaction out of doing that also. And if this is your first time by, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. And remember, Keep on building. There's plenty of trees out there. See you next time.